Okay, guys. So, and th this is how we're gonna divide anemias. So, so anemia division. And uh, the the thing is, you should understand that anemias, the the causes are totally, totally heterogeneous. So the 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 best way, actually, how to somehow divide them into directories, is is a laboratory way. That means, um, basically, first we start with a simple uh, blood smears, and then we go deeper, deeper, and and as we are getting more and more to the diagnosis, then we can use totally specific tests only for this. Okay, and and and, and some diseases are, are very like test specific, in, in or causes of the anemias, but. Uh, Basically, uh, the the thing with which we start is is first you know it's anemia, so so you take blood and there there is a decreased level of erythrocyte, and then you go farther and you check the blood smear. And what will you check? You will check the mean corpuscular volume. So first, the easiest thing is check the mean cor corpuscular volume, if it's normal, smaller or or bigger, and then you can also check reticulocytes. So these are the the a reticulocyte percentage. Normally it should be 2%. And if it's below 2%, it's a difference. And if it's higher. And basically, uh, so uh, in terms of mean corpus kilo volume, this really helps us to divide the diseases into three groups. And of course, no, first one is the normocytic um, uh, anemia. So, so uh, that means they have normal volume, and, and the normal volume is from 80 to 100 femtoliters. Femtoliters, okay? So those are normocytic. Cytic. This is normocytic anemia. And over here, of course, uh, this, this is, those, those are normal sizes. And in, in case you want to divide uh, normocytic anemia, then the reticular site count really helps us to divide it even farther. Okay, so normal cystic anemia, 80 to 100. If, if the, the volume of the erythrocyte is smaller, then you call it microcytic, micro. And if it's higher, then, then in 100, it's macro, macrocytic, okay? And basically in both of these cases, I guess in all cases, it's a, it, it's a failure of, of production. And there is a correlation with uh, if the, basically anemia you can have because of decreased production or decreased um, or or increased destruction, and in case of decreased production, there's something with bone marrow. Either it's not responding to or there are no stimuli to to increase the production or whatever, okay, or there's some destruction of the bone marrow. And in both of these cases, all of these cases, if there is a decreased production, what's going to be decreased? Reticulocytes. So the percentage of reticulocytes in the peripheral blood will be decreased. In contrast to this, if there is increased hemolysis destruction and the production is okay, then the bone marrow will respond to this with increased production. And if it speeds up the production, of course, it will bit increase the, the percentage of reticulocytes in the blood, in the peripheral blood. So basically, if the reticulocytes are increased, it means it means increased production. If reticulocytes are decreased, it means uh, decreased production. Okay, and and in both of these cases, there's a problem in production. In microcytic, majorly the problem is with the hemoglobin synthesis. So 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 the problem is on the side of hemoglobin. And anyways, the um, the, the production of reticulocytes will be also decreased, or the level of right will be decreased. But anyways, in this case, it doesn't matter so much because the smaller volume of the erythrocyte is much more important. It tells us it's microcity. I don't want to, it's not so important to check the reticulocytes. In macrocytic, there's a pro problem of production as well. But in this case, it's a problem with DNA production. But anyways, in, in total, production is decreased. That's why also the amount of reticulocytes will be decreased. In the peripheral blood, but in these two extreme cases, macrocytic or microcytic, we more care about the 
the mean corpuscular volume. Over here it's decreased, so it's below 80 femtoliters. Over here it's increased, it's above 100 femtoliters. And then we are going to go, okay, but now, now, uh, where do we need really reticular, and where, where they really help us in a way, is the normocytic anemias, where we can have two scenarios. In one, the problem was decreased production. So same like over here, but over here I'm uh, I'm having norm. I the 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 femtoliters won't help help me. So I'm going to check the reticle size, and there will be decreased. It's below two percent. So so and if 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 the production is increased, but there's hemolysis or bleeding or whatever, production will be increased and there will be also increase okay so uh, so if the the bone marrow is fine and i'm just losing erythrocytes whatever the cause is reticulocytes will be increased and i have two options how to, how to lose them first it's a distraction due to hemolysis and this is a this is a big group okay and we're going to discuss it further and uh, hemolysis means um, either it's going to be due to some immune uh, problem. I'm going to destroy my own um, red cells, so it's uh, immune Im immune mediated, or it's non-immune. So it could be a mechanical distraction. We're going to talk about it deeper later. Non-immune. And guess what test helps us to say if it's immune or not? Over here, after we test the, its normal size, then we'll find there is an increased amount of reticulocyte. Uh, so then we think it's hemolysis, and then we want to find if it's immune or not. We're going to do the Combs test. And if the Combs test is positive, very likely it's immune mediated. On the other side, if it's not due to hemolysis, what else it could be? Well, it could be normal bleeding. Bleeding. I'm just losing my erythrocytes because of bleeding, acute bleeding. Okay, obviously if I'm gonna acutely bleed and I'm gonna then drink water to it, I will dilute, I will decrease hematocrit and I will decrease amount of hemoglobin in my blood. Uh, the special thing about bleeding is that if it's first two days, really I'm gonna have normal cystic anemia. But then very soon, what's going to be increased? Uh, uh, kidneys will respond with the increased production of erythropoietin. And very soon, I will release more of the reticulocytes. But in, the, in this case, if there's more of the reticulocytes, I'm and I'm checking only the volume of the cells, very likely, two or three days afterwards, the mean corpuscular volume will be, get, will go a bit higher, or over it can go over 100, not severely, but it can go like 100, 500, 10, and then actually I'm going to start to have slightly macrocytic anemia. Okay, so this is a special thing about acute bleeding. In contrast with bleeding, if it's a small chronic bleeding like GIT bleeding, if I'm having a cancer, remember every time someone over 50 has a has a uh, has a bleeding and very likely anemia and guess which one i'm bleeding chronically i'm losing iron then i'm gonna rather have the sideroblastic anemia so microcytic okay so watch out uh, there's a difference if it's acute bleeding or small chronic bleeding okay but anyway this was a common aside so 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 this is when the production is increased in normal cystic anemia and then it changes in time a bit in, uh, on the other side, if the I'm having normal cystic anemia, but it's due to de decreased production, I have uh, two main options, and there are many ways how to divide it. But I think the, the sort of very nice one is that I can divide it only into if it's a specifically only anemia, so isolated anemia, or mainly. That's the the, the, the main thing about this is decreased erythrocyte. So isolated anemia, and as an as a example of this, I can say, for example, if I'm having decreased uh, levels of, let's say, erythropoietin. So if there is something with, if the kidneys are failing, rather I'm going to have isolated anemia, but it's not always absolute. And in contrast to that, that I can have pancytic 
cytopenia. That means erythrocytes are decreased, thrombocytes are decreased, and white blood cells are decreased. And of course, this means anemia, so I'm gonna be tired. This means I'm gonna bleed, I'm gonna have petechias or whatever, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna be immune deficient, I'm, I'm gonna be of risk of infection, and etc. And these cases, of course, there's a pro problem with bone marrow. And there are many examples, we're gonna go through it, give you one aplastic anemia, for example, okay? Good, so, so this is the main division, microcytic, normocytic, and macrocytic. And uh, we're gonna, now we're gonna go farther and we're gonna divide these. First, I'm gonna start with microcytic, then, then I'm gonna divide macrocytic or in more detail, and then we're gonna go in, in detail with, I guess, with the, this part, so mainly hemolysis, and then we're gonna go through the decreased production division. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.